Uh, welcome everyone to our presentation by Core Studio. Uh, Core Studio is a firm-wide idea incubator and our mission is to increase the value we bring to clients through innovation. Uh, the Core Studio conducts research, develops custom software applications, design workflows and interactive computational models. Uh, Core Studio was formed in 2011 and um, our crew, crew is uh, getting bigger and bigger with diverse backgrounds from different countries. So let's talk about our first part of the presentation. So you woke up in the middle of the night and it's cold. So you ask artificial intelligence to set the heat up or you are craving for taco, uh, for, you are craving for tacos then you start typing ta taco to Google and auto completes to the uh, taco recipes or shows you Mexican restaurants nearby. Uh, we already live with AI and those unseen algorithms control our lives and devices from smartphones to robots, from security cameras to, um, to our cars. Uh, artificial intelligence um, impacts businesses and increases the economic growth by imp improving the uh, productivity. And as we all know, in AEC industry, we have so many repetitive and laborious tasks. And AI can be helpful um, by suggesting some architectural design for architects, or it can help us with some of the project management or safety related problems in construction. And for engineers, it can combine the institutional knowledge with big data so that the engineers can focus on uh, creativity and complex tasks rather than trial and error. So uh, with that being said, uh, it would be perfect if we could transfer the entire company's knowledge uh, to different apps. And as Core Studio, we believe that it's possible and it, we can achieve this by using AI. And we will walk uh, you through some of our current projects. So first one is T3PO. Uh, according to the United uh, Nations survey, um, building, uh, heating building uh, accounts for 30% of the building related carbon dioxide emissions worldwide. And, um, and we can um, basically, uh, sorry, with the new energy code regulations, uh, cities will be asking building owners to cut this emission substantially. And infrared thermography is a great tool to assess these uh, energy losses in the structures. And T3PO is the latest um, software that we um, built by Core Studio uh, and is powered by AI. So we use computer vision algorithms to identify anomalies like thermal leaks and bridges in the interior, exterior, and mechanical in the building. And uh, it can up to, uh, we, and we can save up to 70% time compared to the manual infrared thermography surveys. Uh, as we all know, um, reviewing, and, um, reviewing and finding useful information from drawing is pretty difficult task because most of these drawings are in physical format. So you end up tracing uh, so many drawings to reach out the final information that you would like to get. And that's why we are working on drawing data extractor so that we can uh, extract this information from the drawings easily and build a repository uh, so that we can use it in our uh, machine learning models. And as, as you can see, we can identify critical uh, structural locations, geometries, um, section or load information from the um, physical or scanned drawings. So um, reinforcement learning is another exciting area of AI. And ManageRL was a uh, tool that we developed in one of our hackathon projects, internal hackathon projects. Um, so it uses uh, uh, TT's timesheets, project information, and also key performance metrics uh, from the employers. And it builds a model so that we can uh, make the decision-making process easier for the initial phases of the design and distribute to employees when there are uh, concurrent projects. And um, good thing about reinform reinforcement learning is that you can also discover different management styles. 
Uh, Frybot uh, is an AI-based ch AI chatbot that we developed with Rumble and Continuum in our hackathon 2020. So uh, it's, it's helping us to encapsulate the collective intelligence of an organization and it accelerates the reach uh, to the company's assets uh, pretty easily. It can give you design recommendation, uh, it can suggest people or project if uh, well, when it's relevant, it can show you a 3D building, uh, sorry, 3D model of the structure, or it can even book your flight tickets if you are looking for. Absolutely. Now let's talk about structures. Uh, structural design is a relatively complicated process to automate, especially because it involves several steps. For example, defining the geometry, assigning the loads, and maybe the most challenging part is you have to go through this trial and error to make sure you have all the sections that are both economical and satisfy code requirements. We at CORE believe this design process can be automated substantially with AI in three different stages. The first stage, of course, is data. Our firm has over 70 years of engineering expertise, and we try to leverage this institutional knowledge to build massive data sets that explore every corner of the design space. Our physics-based design engines can build millions of design points that takes for human decades to create, but we try to do that in just a few days. After we are equipped with these kinds of data, we can start designing buildings with machine learning. For example, for a chevron brace frame, if your traditional design takes n times, you can accelerate that by a factor of 50 using this app. So for example, you can minimize the communications in your design office, to get better recommendations in just a few seconds. But what we value most in Core Studio is the time you save by using this AI accelerated workflow, we can help your engineers focus on creativity and they can as aspire to be great engineers rather than being great at CAD. Uh, equipped with a big repository of different machine learning models and different data sets, we try to connect all of these through our cloud-based infrastructure named Cortex. Cortex uh, is a place for Core Studio to access, share, and deploy machine learning models. For example, you can pick your data set that you require, for example, steel, and then fine tune your machine learning model based on this new data set. And probably the most exciting part for myself is I can do inference calls using my daily driver like Grasshopper. So uh, without all the complications, we can generate maybe several steel designs. Cortex has enabled us <clears throat> excuse me, to build very powerful AI equipped apps, which I'm going to show you uh, in the next few slides. If you are an engineer and you have designed timber, you probably know about all the tables and exceptions that come with different species of timber. The machine learning app behind the glue lamp timber designer has seen over 30 different species of glue lamp and does the job for you with just a few uh, clicks that helps the app to identify the geometry and you just get the column profile for up to 20 stories. As an engineer myself, I have spent countless hours designing hundreds of heaters and beams for different floor layout plans. And this process takes time because not only you have to design for forces, but you have to make sure the vibration criteria and serviceability things are all satisfied. And the Steel Bay Designer app does that for you by just, a by just a specifying how many bays you have and how long they are. Finally, shear walls. Imagine that you're on a call uh, about a skyscraper project in Midtown Manhattan with an architect and the architect is asking you if you can make the shear walls just slightly smaller. Also on the same call, you may have the client who's asking you a relatively good estimate of how much steel or concrete they should buy uh, to build this shear wall. Well, this app, like the previous ones, can be your real-time assistant. Uh, we would like to conclude this part of the presentation by saying that Core Studio is very excited about the future. We also understand how powerful AI is and with great power comes great responsibility. Our team is comprised of people with uh, diverse backgrounds, as Sila mentioned, including architects, 
structural and machine learning engineers. And we value that our products are being constantly reviewed by seasoned engineers at Thornton Tomasetti. Uh, with that said, uh, we strive to make sure that this AI integration is done the right way, which is by the AC professionals. Thank you and back to David. Thank you, Sila and Amit. Everyone, great to see everyone here in person. It's been a long time, so fantastic. Uh, I wanna talk about an application uh, today that we are releasing uh, early next year uh, called Ellipse. And Ellipse is a little thing we've had about two years of development, but I'd say over a decade of kind of feedback and direction coming into it. And the questions that kind of sparked Ellipse was, you know, looking at the current process of project delivery, design, development, and all the phases of it, and thinking about how many thousands of data points, how many thousands of hours, uh, how many different stakeholders all come in to the development of a project and how much of that data is actually lost in that process, whether to time or through communication. Um, there's a lot of information, a high percentage of it that ultimately just gets dissipated uh, in the process and lost to, uh, to history. Uh, and then how uh, through the process of actual project delivery and development, the mediums we use today to communicate that information and bring it out to the world, how much data actually gets lost just through the way that we actually um, put the work out into the world. When we move things into drawing sets, um, we cross-reference with schedules and annotations, we pull in spec documents, all on static medium that rely a certain amount of time where these things align. But really we're looking at a series of kind of dead or disparate documents uh, that have all different types of phases uh, involved in them. And that kind of communication between those different platforms can ultimately get lost. And then of course, at the end of the project, after it goes into delivery, how much of that knowledge long-term just ends up in cold storage, right? That BIM model gets put away, you know, five years from now when you have to open it up again, does it even still work with your current version of Revit or whatever application you're using? You know, what problems do you run into there? So how can we actually begin to think about creating an ecosystem or an environment where all these disparate sources, disparate stakeholders, uh, and then all the different data sources can come together into one place uh, that we can access? Uh, and so along that process, then what's everything that has to be maintained, the geometry of the project, all the graphical clarity and information that goes into a good drawing sheet and annotation, the information and the data, but also all the cross connectivity, you know, one of the great things about BIM models and what it's brought is the ability to basically connect these sources within the platform itself, but so much of that gets lost when it exits that ecosystem out into the world. So in the eight minutes I have left or however many, a very brief history of the uh, decade of exploration into lossless approaches, which is something uh, that Thornton Tomasetti uh, and Core Studio have been looking at basically since the founding. So Core Studio has kind of looked at this from three different mediums of delivery um, since the beginning and kind of hackathons and prototypes. Uh, early hackathons looked at an application called VA3C, which was the first kind of approach to beginning to move three-dimensional modeling uh, up onto the web uh, and make it accessible to multiple stakeholders collaboratively. Uh, pollination was a tool that took the idea of all this BIM data that gets generated, can we create an online platform where it can be shared and exchanged, uh, and again, kind of added to over time. And then one of the uh, later applications we looked at was how do we actually take all that 2D drawing information uh, that ultimately is what we deliver uh, as architects and engineers uh, into the world, and then bring that up uh, to the cloud. Uh, over the next couple of years, uh, Core Studio had basically worked on refining these ideas through a lot of feedback from all of you, uh, and then also internal testing, uh, and beginning to develop libraries that could support this type of an effort. And these kind of over the past couple of years culminated in three different applications uh, that all basically took this information, put it in web applications, and then opening it up to the public um, so that everyone could begin to try sharing it, using it on their projects, and ultimately learn how this process is evaluated. Uh, and as that began to develop, one of the key things that became important is the need for cross communication between all these platforms. But since we had basically um, built three independent platforms, it became a lot of hot wiring behind the scenes and it became pretty clear that uh, we needed to kind of reinvent that problem. And so to simplify it, basically what we thought about is, can we take it back down to just looking at 3D, 2D and data visualization and building a new platform in the central, um, in the center of that, uh, which we look at as an AEC data studio, uh, we're calling Ellipse. 
Uh, and so at the heart uh, of this new platform is basically the project data, which again, not just from multiple software, but multiple stakeholders is looking to bring it together. And it's not quite as simple as that previous diagram uh, as we've mapped it out, that's kind of expanded uh, in complexity. Um, but how do we address all of these things to create a very simple user experience for accessing Ellipse? So what is Ellipse and where is it at today? Um, basically, Ellipse allows you to take all of that information coming from BIM platforms or ultimately um, several other different platforms, um, be it drawings, models, or even sheet sets, uh, and then take each one of those um, pieces of information and then upload it to a web platform um, that is accessible to uh, multiple users, as well as kind of curating what data ultimately goes up into the platform itself. That information uh, is then accessible online um, for both accessing 3D models, um, 2D drawings, uh, and the data set simultaneously, and beginning to leverage those attributes um, to visualize data uh, that's behind it that maybe the uh, application you're working in doesn't easily display, uh, and begin to explore uh, the actual values underlying the geometry and ultimately the design of the project. Um, it also allows you to go in and kind of query information. So how do you very rapidly take those models, drawings, or even just the data itself and begin to evaluate uh, and look at the distribution of the, uh, the different data points? Uh, and then also one of the big goals was to maintain that cross connectivity. So one of the big advantages, again, in a platform like Revit is that you can query in the model where a drawing element is coming from and find out where that um, uh, information is associated and then see where else throughout a drawing set uh, it's also located. So Ellipse allows you to maintain that connectivity, the topology of the model and the drawing set uh, outside of the, the Revit platform. So when you wanna uh, click on a uh, element inside of one of your drawings and see where it is in 3D, you can still maintain that relationship. And then as we get further into it, eventually uh, see where else it is uh, in the kind of drawing sets, and then also see all the data that's associated with it uh, as well. Uh, and we wanted to build Ellipse basically not as kind of a static dashboard, but as a flexible platform um, where you can kind of construct how it is you would like to visualize this information um, based on the stakeholder or team member or whoever you're working with, you would like to share it with. So uh, one of the underlying um, uh, drivers of Ellipse is allowing a kind of maximum flexibility to customize the way you interact with these models and data um, on a kind of case per case basis, whether that's through the lifespan of a project uh, or depending on uh, who ultimately you're looking to communicate information to. And so here we can see just a little bit of uh, the ability to kind of build up your own project dashboard, uh, which can have everything from uh, 2D drawings, 3D models, uh, down to just typing some text or putting together a little presentation. Uh, and additionally, we didn't want to just limit it to the software that we're aware of and use, um, but wanted to provide the ability to basically just upload data, models, and drawings directly into the application. Um, so one of the uh, main features uh, in Ellipse is that you can actually upload your models, drawings, and data sets directly and at multiple different times. So as your project kind of progresses, you can add this additional information in and build up uh, a kind of a larger project, um, or sorry, a central project that you can distribute uh, to your entire team. Uh, and you can begin to curate how that information is displayed um, based on who you would like to interact with it, uh, and then also who it is you'd like to communicate information to. So depending on if you're building a presentation as an architect, if you'd like to just simply give access to the models and drawings uh, in more of a data-centered way for a spec writer potentially, rather than sending CSVs and Excel sheets back and forth, can you create a live data interaction and bring that in? Um, or potentially even in a uh, sub-consultant uh, working on the project, how can you begin to pull that information out uh, and have it all accessible, but also curate based on who that stakeholder is, what it is they can access so that the data and the uh, materials they're seeing are relevant uh, to their experience with the uh, application. Uh, and then additionally, we wanted to provide the ability uh, to collaborate and provide feedback. So instead of just pushing things out into the world, uh, giving you the ability to comment, um, to um, actually provide feedback, assign tasks, but also attach files uh, and additional information such as specs, site photos, however it is you'd like to use that 3D model, whether it's in the field or in the office uh, to communicate. So that's a little bit about where Ellipse is now. Um, we'll say tomorrow-ish. Could be a couple of weeks, could be a year on some of these things, maybe more. Um, but we're looking to expand the ecosystem we work with. So right now in the alpha, we're um, basically allowing you to interact via Revit, Grasshopper, and Rhino. Um, but we're looking to expand into engineering uh, software as well and beyond. And this is one thing we're very excited to get feedback on and learn how people would like to use this. 
Um, we're also beginning to leverage some of the new technologies that are available, both in 3D web viewers and 2D viewer technology um, via the uh, McNeil 3DM platform. So at this time, we can actually take multiple different file formats, but we'll be extending this out to allowing you to upload um, different models from different sources, be that an OBJ, a DXF, um, or even in the future IFC models, PDF and Excel, uh, and begin to read the data and geometry into um, the actual content. And thinking about where the sources of those data uh, ultimately come from and how that can kind of grow over time. Projects aren't just coming out of Revit. Things are coming in from multiple different sources. There's a lot of great technologies out there um, that already kind of handle interoperability and data management. So how can we leverage the fact that this is an online platform to pipeline that data in uh, and create an ecosystem for kind of visualizing and sharing uh, data from multiple sources that might be dynamic and live, uh, not just static and output uh, at particular times. Um, so if you would like to try uh, Ellipse Out, um, it's in early alpha uh, right now. So we're doing a little bit of an invite only. So you can uh, ask for access to that or actually the core AI tools uh, as well um, via the QR code. And then we'll be doing a public release on Ellipse uh, in early 2023. Not going to fix a date or even a month uh, at this point on that. Um, but um, it is available to try now, and we are really looking forward um, to getting everyone's feedback and being to develop this tool that's meant for the entire AEC or ACO community uh, to actually contribute information and feedback and help us guide the development of this. Because ultimately, this isn't a tool for us. This is a tool for the entire um, uh, community to work with. Uh, with that, thank you very much, uh, and uh, enjoy the conference.